Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Big Sarge, large and in charge, my one and only self, looking to take myself up off the shelf and discover, find my greatest internal and external wealth. Hoping that you do the same for yourself. You know what it is. It's Grunt Speak, where we speak to you, and hopefully you come through and speak too. Speak, Grunt, you know what we do. 11B, 11 Charlie, and as a friend reminded me, 11 Alpha 2 for our infantry officers that come through so all my guys i guess you know what you do O three eleven two. the guys as scouts who like to say they infantry too no disrespect but shout outs to you but uh this is what we do we get on here and we speak to you hey this may not be for your kids but your kids are welcome to listen to it'll be something to bless them today with that being said the missing in action guy whiskey charlie what's been going on with <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, man, just work, work, work. Hey, uh, uh, nothing but uh, good news, though. Uh, got the word that uh, my uh, upper chain uh, uh, feel highly about me. Uh, so, uh, so I've been working uh, quite a bit, uh, trying to push myself and to uh, better myself in, in the aspect of the business and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's that's where it comes from. And then also, uh, of course, you know, spend time with the uh, the family and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, the last couple of Thursdays, you know, I've just been working. They had me been had me up until working until eleven o'clock at night. So of course, I couldn't join up with the show. It kind of disturbed me. So I talked to the store manager, and the store manager is going to make sure that I am off every day before eight o'clock uh, to be able to go on here and uh, speak with my brothers out here and uh, share my knowledge and share my uh, wisdom to y'all guys out there. So. Uh, sorry for missing out these last couple of weeks, and I know Big Sarge has been keeping y'all on lock, been keeping y'all uh, going, and everything else. But uh, I'm excited about being back on here and uh, getting uh, getting a good word out there for everybody. Hey, hey, it's definitely good to have you back, brother. I know I had a couple people direct message me saying, "Hopefully you're all right. Um, hopefully everything is going well." They had been missing you. I told them everything's fine. He's just working, and of course, it looks like Tim is welcoming you back as well. <laughs> what up, Tim? All right. What's good, Tim? Hold on, hold on. Uh, okay, that's fine. I'll reach out. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm listening to you, but you can keep talking to Tim because last couple of weeks I've been having an issue with uh, communication between me and Chris Dykes. Not an issue, but Facebook and StreamYards has been giving us an issue, so... I'm not able to see his comments or anything on StreamYards. So it's probably because you're not good, good enough, good looking like me, you know. Hey, so some, sometimes good is, looking people um, talk to each other. What I do is I'll sometimes message with him back and forth on uh, Instagram. Uh, okay, I got you. I, I mean, got not you. Instagram on Facebook. Yeah, on um, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, while we're on the show. So I'm actually responding to him right now. Um, anyways, before I forget, uh, all is good on this end. That's good to know, Tim. Hey, uh, before I forget, I want to say my apologies to anyone who has messaged me in the last week and I did not respond back to you, whether it be on Speak Grunt's page or my Ethan J. Smith page. I have been dealing with and battling and beating this cold for the last few days and now i am taking care of my family who's dealing with the same thing so i had to take a little step back from uh the facebook scene and all my other social media sites too and to be honest with you i wasn't gonna be here tonight but whiskey charlie came through and he said hey i got something i want to do i want to talk about some stuff too it's been a while so here we are we here to present to you and then besides i feel like i'm healthy enough to uh to actually get on here and set up then i'm healthy enough to do the show i do not want to let anyone else down or because i'm feeling a little under the weather um not give out what god has us to give out because you never know who life is gonna help so whiskey charlie hey. will be leading guy in the show but we gonna flow the way we flow we here tonight for you because that's what we do and uh we make it happen so we all go through something but we gotta find a way to overcome it Whiskey Charlie, so tell me what you got for me. You've been gone a long time. I think I've been doing one minute wars, one minute wins by myself, which has been hey. fine. You got about two oh. weeks worth. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Know? Hey, look. Uh, 
one minute win, one minute war. Uh, I would say uh, biggest thing to me would be is, uh, one minute war is uh, definitely uh, I'm not challenged myself enough. I mean, I uh, set myself up for small, uh, I guess you would say small expect- expectations or small goals when I know that myself can do it a lot better and a lot bigger. Uh, so definitely the, the war with myself is uh, challenge myself. Uh, as my store manager would always say is, you know, she likes challenging us. She likes stretching us like a rubber band until you snap and pop. Right. So uh, the biggest thing is, is I'm not stretching myself enough because I know I've got more, a lot more uh, capabilities, a lot more uh, things that I can do but I'm not challenging myself enough and I'm just letting myself go at a shorter period of time. So uh, I'd say my uh, war would be is, uh, you know, challenging myself a little, a little harder on myself. Uh, Cause you know, we, we did start a new year uh, and I want to make sure that uh, everything, everything that I have in my, uh, I guess that my path or, or, or my goals is uh, going to meet it. And if I don't challenge myself hard enough, I ain't going to reach it sooner. I'm just going to reach it later, but it's going to, I'm going to put myself through a lot more obstacles. But if I put myself, it may be a little bit tighter uh, timeline that I may reach these obstacles, but at the same time, I'll be able to reach them a lot sooner and uh, be able to get uh, a lot farther than when I want to. Uh, I would say win wise uh, lately, you know, I, I guess uh, you, I would say that, uh, you know, just uh, live my life day to day, man. Uh, day to day, uh, enjoying my life, uh, enjoying my family, enjoying my uh, wife and kids. So, uh, I would say that's my win. My win would be that, uh, enjoying my time, uh, on, on earth with my family and, my my friends. Nice. That's good. I can, uh, <clears throat> war for me. Um, if anything would be, Watching my wife, even though it's just a cold, be sick. And because my wife, she's the one who never gets sick in our family. Like, she's always good to go, ready to go. And so anytime I see my wife get sick, I'm nervous. I know I'm going to do everything in my power to take care of her, but my mind get to wondering about the what ifs and will she be sick long and I get worrisome and things like that. That's my best friend. Like That's my best friend, Blue. I be I don't know what I'd be without her. So... That might be the war for me right now uh, um, that I think I'm dealing with the most. But the win is that I got Jesus, bro. I'm calm enough to know that she's going to be all right. And I'm smart enough to know the things to do. In the kitchen right now, I got a, a, a nice pot of stew brewing. It's just about done. It's got all the good fixings in it that you need. I don't have no meat in it. I want it to be straight, veggie, straight veggies and healthy for her. So. I'll serve her up some of that with some uh, some tea, some lemon ginger tea, and, and help her get back to her strength. So the win for me is, man, I got the right mindset in order to get it done and not let the worry in or the war get the best of me. And then I got a job, you know, that supports me, needing to take time off, you know, checking on me to see am I all right and things like that. So having good people in your corner and knowing that you can focus on, as Tim say, your priorities that you have to take care of at home. So that's my win, man. That's my win right there. I, I would definitely, hey, Big Sarge, I can definitely uh, piggyback you on that, man. Uh, you know, with, with, with uh, you, you know, a company that you work for that uh, actually uh, thinks about you and uh, it's all about uh, taking care of their, uh, their people and, and uh, reaching out and checking on you and stuff like that. Look, with, even with the CDC coming down and saying that, hey, look, hey, it's only five days now, this, that, and the other, Home Depot since the beginning has been paying associates for two weeks paid off if they've got it. No matter what's if you go, you can start feeling better sooner or later, whatever else, but they're paying people for the time off that extended period of time off. I'm like, to me, like any other company, that they, they don't do that. Hey, you're sick, hey, you better get better soon, or we're letting your ass go, or we're finding you the next day, right? So it's a it's great to be able to find. Uh, a company that's willing to, uh, you know, understand and uh, help you out, whether it's you or your uh, significant other. Uh, the other day, uh, uh, a couple of weeks, uh, probably about, I want to say two, three weeks back, uh, my, my wife got ill. And uh, instead of me having to come in and work whatever else, they, my uh, other assistant manager called me and told me, hey, go ahead and take the day off. Don't even worry about coming in. My mentality, though, like who I am, my mentality was, hey, I'll go take her there and then I'm going to come back to work. No, they're like, no, you need to stay 
stay there, take care of your wife and take care of the situations you got going on. So no, I'm, a, I'm very appreciative of what I, what I have and what, what my uh, job, uh, you know, helps me out with. So uh, definitely if you, if you're looking for an opportunity, a career, I, I don't even call it really a job. I call it a career because Home Depot can be a career for you. Uh, I never, never in my mind, I'm not going to put the number out there, but never in my mind that I, think I would make money that I was making last year I don't see it but uh it's definitely helped along the way but uh I can definitely tell you this much uh Home Depot is uh, definitely a career it's not just a uh just a job or just a uh hey uh just a pickup gig type deal that's what's up man that's good that is definitely a plus in the bonus I think uh, I heard something about not too long ago um I don't know if it was if you were vaccinated or not, or if it was all across the board. Um, but I think Walmart just stopped paying their employees who are off for too long for COVID and things like that. They were paying them at first, but I think they just ended that. And I don't know if it's for all their employees or if it's like vaccinated versus non-vaccinated. So don't quote me on that. Do the do a little bit more digging yourself in the research. <clears throat> I've seen it come across the the uh the idiot box, the TV screen. But uh, just because you brought that up, it made me think about that. So it's definitely good to have a company that supports you and all that you do. Again, going back to what Tim said, you sound like I use the sound whiskey, Charlie. You know, I'm that I'm that uh, that individual who's going to go to work, 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 work and be like, all right, I'll come back home and check on my wife and make sure she's good. But your first priority is at home. So if you don't make sure your wife good, who always making sure you good, then you just might be in trouble. At least that's why I look at it. So oh yeah, oh yeah, big sorry. I feel the same way. It's you know I deal with a. I've kind of mentioned it a lot. You know, having my father being a caregiver, and a lot that's been going on, and that's still something that I'm going through and uh, dealing with that. And I think what brings me comfort and what brings me peace when I'm always looking at my job, my 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 family that I was born into versus the family that I created and other things that's going on in life is like scripture always come back to me as husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. So for me, it's always, you know, God, me, my wife, and, and it's in that order. I got to represent what God wants me to do. I have to be strong for me because if I'm not strong for me, I can't really be the best for my wife and children and my wife, because again, that's my rock. That's my ace. That's my that's my one. So definitely, man, we have to get our priorities in order in all aspects of our life, just like the topic we're talking about tonight, self-development. How did you develop yourself before getting in the military, while you was in the military, after you got out? What steps are you taking? What tools are you using to continue to develop yourself? And before I get into that and I get into the chat, I have to take this quick second. I have to take this quick second. This is another one of those things that I have to do, unfortunately, but this is another short times of remembrance for somebody that I've lost, that we've lost. Rest in peace to Sergeant Hill, a.k.a. Silent Bob. I had been off the Internet for, like I said, a little bit over a week or so. And when I got back on and set up for Grunt Speak, I seen guys posting that, you know, one of my fellow hooligan brothers out of Michigan had taken his life yesterday. And it's just like, yo, this thing is crazy. Um, so I want to take a moment of silence real quick. So let me drop my hat and my glasses and then we'll get back to it. A moment of silence for Silent Bob, Sergeant Hughes. Uh, what's Ellen? Do you know what that song is about? All right. Thank you. Faust, what's going on? They're always about business and not employees until pressure is put on them, shaking my head. Yeah, that's true. That can't happen. Yeah, man, it's just, it's way too many. It's way too many. I uh, was talking to my old squad leader, Kibby, earlier today after I found out the news, just checked on him to see how he was doing. And uh, it's just, it's way too many, man. This thing never gets easier. It was just that Captain Wog's funeral. It feels like a week ago. Could have been a little bit long. Not Captain Wog. Oh, God, forgive me. At Captain Smart's funeral about what feels like a week ago now, a little bit over a week ago. And then to get this news a week later, you know, it's just, it's too much. 
It's way too much at times. Tim Stryker, One Minute Wars. My girlfriend had COVID, and I realized that there was little fear in my blood when I thought I would lose her. Scared me to death. When is she's good? And mom got her a job and loves it. Hey, nah, that's what's up, man. That's good to hear, man, as she kicked that COVID B-I-T-C-H in the face. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I can say that and call her that because I that's what they they classified my mom passing away as to COVID. Um yeah, so, no, hey, hey big Sarge, hey, look, uh Man, that's that's rough. Hey, COVID's no joke. Look, I, I'm I'm gonna let y'all know. I'm one of those uh, guys that also is uh, not not pro fucking shot and anything else like that. I'm not anything for uh, for the bullshit of COVID, but uh, because of what what I've heard and don't get me wrong, you know what you hear and what you feel is a different two different things, and what you do in your own life. Uh, like if you feel that the shots for you, man, go about your business and do, do the shot. You know, in the military, they wouldn't have gave you the option of it, then it just stuck you with the shit and you know, moved on, right? But uh, as a civilian, I, I've I've chosen the, the option of uh, not uh, going the route of the shots, and that's just because that's my opinion, that's my my right, that's my freedom that I chose to not go that route. But if you choose, hey, I, I have no disrespect. Hey, much much luck to you. Much respect to you. Go on about uh, go about your thing, uh, but uh, outside that, uh, yeah, the topic today, uh, it's really gonna touch on some points. And uh, when me and Big Sarge gets uh, started on that, we'll talk on to that. But uh, uh, let's see here, Faust said that uh, has anyone talked to Staff Sergeant uh, McDonald? I wonder about that guy from time to time. Went off gr- off the grid. Yeah, he's one that I got typed in the chat. I hadn't heard from him since the deployment. I didn't never. I never had an issue with Sergeant McDonald, but he wasn't someone that I talked to on a regular basis while I was in. He kind of had his own little clique of friends to me. He was kind of also to himself, you know, maybe standoffish. So our energies just didn't connect. It wasn't bad energy. It just wasn't the energy that connected that we would, you know, keep in contact after, uh, after we served together. I hope all is well with him. I know he's a very sharp and intelligent dude, but where he's actually at or what he's actually doing, I have no clue. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I haven't heard anything or, you know, just like you said, I agree with you. Uh, you know, he, he had his, uh, he had his little uh, clip that he talked to, and nothing against that. You know, he had his people he talked to, and he had his uh, uh, people that he would uh, stay in contact with, but not 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 with me. <laughs> uh, but uh, of course, I was a private slash specialist when he was a uh, staff sergeant, so <laughs> or a sergeant, anyways, of that fact. But uh, so yeah. There's one other thing before I forget. This is for my bulldog brothers that I, um, my 141 brothers that I talked about, and I think I posted maybe a week ago that my 125 brother, Chris Dykes, who's usually on here, but we having some technical difficulties with uh, me seeing his messages and him seeing ours. So we sometimes go back and forth on Facebook with the messages. But <clears throat> Before I forget, again, acknowledgement to him for doing this, even though he doesn't want any, no praise or no thank yous. That's just me. Oh, I, that's just me. I feel like you have to give honor where honor is due, and that's just how I feel about the situation. But, uh, again, I've been under the weather, and i got a few other things to do, and I'll probably take care of this tomorrow, this weekend. And uh, I received something. I received the plaque that I talked about. And I did have the honor of attending Captain Smart's funeral. It was it was an amazing home going. The Bulldogs represented um, well. It was easily almost two dozen two dozen of us there, from HH from headquarters platoon to second platoon. So we represented well, and I want to thank everybody for that. And I said I had something coming, and I was going to get it with uh, Major Adams when I got it. Well, sir, if you paying attention to this. I got it, and I will get with you to deliver this. And here it is, guys. The plaque for Captain Smart. Uh, that's it, amazing, Big Sarge. 
if you can see that. Oh, yeah. And what it says is, what we do in life echoes in eternity. In honor of Captain Jeremy Smart, 141st Infantry Regiment, Operation Iraqi Freedom. So I'll be getting with Major Adams to deliver this to him, and then Major Adams will see about getting this delivered to the family. So, hey, man, you never know what you can do just by doing what God calls you to do. This all started from an idea, and we are blessing people in ways that we didn't even know they could be blessed with simple gestures like this, man. So anyhow, I just wanted to say that before we really get to where we going. Well, I ain't going to say that. I just wanted to say that. I'm not going to say what we're doing is not on topic Well, where we're going, but everything is all right because God got us doing it this way. What? Self-development, man. So Whiskey Charlie, take me in there, man. What was you thinking when you came up with this idea, this topic? What was it that uh, made you think about that? Man, hey, self-development, uh, outside of the ordinary, of course, uh, being, uh, you know, thinking about what you need to do uh, with yourself. Uh, I think uh, what brought this up is because uh, work came around and said, hey, we, we have to do these uh, certain things every every so often. It's called a development blueprint. How are you going to develop yourself, right? What are you doing to better yourself? And uh I think that's what got into my mind is develop myself. And I think a lot of people will think like, un, I ain't going to say unrealistic goals, but I'm going to say like larger scale, larger scale, which is not unrealistic, but at the same time, it's on uh, goals that you need, you need to break down to a, a portion. You need to break down your goal of what you want to do in your life or what you wanted to do. Like when we go to basic training, your first thought of, I just need to survive basic training. When I joined the military, my first thought was, I need to survive basic training. I need to get through this, and then I can make it into the next next stage, right? And then whenever you're in the stage of, hey, I just graduated basic training, I got this shit. But then while you're in there, it's like, okay, I got to make it. You know, I, I got to make sure I make my PT test. I got to make sure A, B, and C is all, all complete, right? But it's about categorizing, you know, being realistic on specific goals of what you want to do, right? So mm -hmm. when it came to, uh, you know, going overseas, hey, it's like, I got to survive, right? And you so you focused on that one thing, I got to survive. And how, what goal or what thing did you focus on so much that got you to the point to where it's like, whether you survive or, uh, I hate to say survive or not survive, right? Because, uh, to our fellow brothers out there that did not make it back, I mean, I've, you know, they, I'm pretty sure they weren't focused on a goal of not surviving. They were focusing on the goal of making it back and everything else. But what, what, uh, what made that difference, or what set that off? What, what did you focus on that made it to where you made it to that goal of coming back? I think for me. <clears throat> Yeah, that is nice, Faust. Um, I think for me, what the, the main thing that I focused on at that stage, it was really just finishing. Like, it was really just finishing. I don't, I don't know. I didn't have any. Like, I have to do this for a particular person. I have to do this for this reason. Like, I just didn't want to fail because I've talked about this before. Like, the first time I went to the military, I considered myself failing because I quit during AIT. And I had a valid reason for leaving. You know, my wife at the, who's now my wife, wasn't my wife. People had broken into my house and I felt like it was more important to go home and see about my family. And at that time they wouldn't allow me to, but I found a way out. So when I went back into basic training, and mind you, when I was in basic training and I quit, I was two weeks from graduating. Like I had offered to be recycled and everything, but they wouldn't do it for me. So anyhow, when I quit, that was kind of like a uh, a big letdown for me because I had quit other things in my life. And the Army was supposed to have been a new beginning, a step in a fresh direction. So when I quit, that was a letdown for me. But fast forward, when I went back to infantry basic training, it was really just about finishing. And I'm like, I've been here before and I can do this. So that, that second time around, it was really just about finishing. That first time around that I went, even though I didn't finish the way I wanted to, what pushed me to get through it because I was looking to change my life. I was looking to do something different than what I had grown up doing and what I had carried with me from Detroit 
and family and what I thought life was. So the Army was a fresh beginning, a new start for me. So I had such a desire just to do what I felt was like win that it wasn't anything that was going to stop me. I had already made up in my mind if I got hurt, I was willing to be recycled. Like I had been through the smoke sessions and I realized I didn't die. So it was all good. And, you know, that's what really propelled me through basic training. And as far as like my combat missions and things like that, I just believed in God and I just felt like it wasn't my time. But I was also comfortable with it. If I go, I go. I, I can't control that. So having that comfort of knowing that I don't control when my time is up or so just do the best you can while you're here and think about the men that you lead or the people that's around you that's feeding off your energy then those were the things that I was able to focus on and, you know, my working out and my reading and studying certain things helped me to continue to develop myself and my understanding of the maps and the routes because I was always leading vehicle. Like those are ways I developed myself to give me more comfort when we went out in sector to do my job accurately. Yeah, I got you big, Sarge. Sorry about that. Uh, if that answers the your question at all. Oh no! It it it, it definitely did. I whenever it, uh, whenever it came to uh, myself, I think I think uh, it's one of those things that you don't you don't think on as much. You you live to the moment, right? And that's my biggest thing is I, I live to the moment. I don't ever plan anything in in the future because I live uh, a minute by minute, day by day type situation. Some people plan things out, but I know that. There's so much that uh, can cause distraction, can cause, uh, you know, cause you to go off rail. But what are you doing to make, that, what's that difference? What, what are you doing to, you know, keep that from, you know, if you start planning, you know, you, you always want to plan things. You, you like trips. My wife's all about planning trips, all about planning things that we're going to do. But, uh, it never winds up being 100% right. But the thing is, is, if you're always willing to accept and be like, okay, how we're going to adapt and how we're going to become a thing, and I think that's where the military has also helped me, is that's going, okay, military. look. Yep, exactly. It's just going like, hey, look. So, <laughs> my mind, I, I guess it's also because of the fact that also I'm used to, you know, watching an old TV show, um, old movie. What's that damn movie where everything goes wrong? What, what's that shit called? Oh. That damn thing called where everything went wrong and the fucking uh, what was that shit? I might as well get it right at the end because I don't remember right now. I know okay. Murphy's law: what can go wrong will go yeah. wrong. Exactly, but it's it's about uh, about the damn tractor and trailer that fucking lost the log off the backside of it and went through the wind windshield and the airplane going down and shit like that. Oh, uh, final somebody's... destination. Yeah, exactly, dude. I, I'm telling you, my mindset. <laughs> Is like that. I'm always thinking like, okay, if I do this, this is what can go wrong. And I, I don't know. I ain't saying that's what you want to think, but at the same time, you always gotta think about what could go wrong, right? Because the thing is, you always think about what's good, what can go right, or what what you can do. Then you're never gonna. There, there's gonna be obstacles. Man, I posted a a thing earlier today. I posted a thing earlier today that uh, kind of touched me, touched me up, you know, and it's so success. And then it showed uh, water uh, being at the uh, being at the showing a, an island, pretty much, right? It showed the island, and then it showed success being above the water, and then everything else being below the water. And my thing with that is that uh, you know you don't, you don't always know what people go through when it comes to the success that they've been that that they've got, right? You you, you don't know you don't know what what type of obstacles they had to go through. But you just always got to keep your head above the water to make sure you're reaching the goal that you want to reach. Yep. Indeed. That's that's 100% correct because we can't compare our success to someone else's. Ah, before mm -hmm. I forget, I seen your uh I seen your I seen your father. What? Yeah, Somebody I seen father. your dad. Oh, okay. I'm talking about old boss. Oh shit. <laughs> old boss. Man. Yeah, he asked that, about so he was at Captain Smart's funeral. Me, him, 
Me, him, Lieutenant Lounsbury, who's now Major Lounsbury. Oh, uh, snap. Lieutenant Kane, who's now Major Kane. Oh, and, shit. And, uh, oh, I know you remember Go, Gomez Lil Carlos, the LT yeah. driver. We, yeah. all went out, we all went out to lunch afterwards um, after Captain Smart's home going. We all yeah. went out to lunch. And just like old times, old balls got us lost, but... <laughs> <laughs> no. We were in San Antonio, and the mission was to meet the LT at his hotel. So after we... Uh, after we uh all drove over there, what's the what's the what's the word that I'm looking for? You can say caravan or whatever, but after we uh followed each other, like we was on a mission from the funeral site from the national cemetery to the LT's hotel room, and the LT came out, old boss was like, I'll go talk to him. And he pulled his car over there, and then he came back to me and little Carlos and was like, Hey, he said we're gonna go to uh Mike's burgers or something like that. And he told us the address. So we like, okay, cool, we'll follow you. And as I'm yeah. pulling out, I see the address is on the building. I'm like, huh, I wonder if this place is right down the street because he said it's real close. So old boss takes us like 10, 11, 12 minutes away, West San Antonio, <laughs> to the other side of the city to a damn vacant lot. <laughs> oh, no. Like, Not the old. So we look it up, and the address is like East Elmo Street, which was literally five seconds from the LT's hotel room. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, boy. What the hell, old boss? But anyhow, oh. he asked about you. He was looking good, too. I got his phone number, too, so I can send it to you later. That's a bad dude, man. But, uh, like, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to tell you that before I forget. And talk about self-development, man. Old boss was talking about how him and his son is building – building cars and he has a thing for hot rods and he's retired, you know, letting his disability or whatever. And he's just, you know, continuing to build that bond with his son and his, and his family, you know, by doing what he loved, working on cars and building cars and things like that. And it's like you said, that self-development, how did you deal with that before you got into the military or improve it while you was in the military and after you got out? Unfortunately, I spoke on earlier about, you know, Staff Sergeant Hill, not being with us anymore and a lot of us facing demons and fighting with things um and fighting with things that you know that's rough in life and how do we develop that strength to be able to reach out to our brothers our sisters in arms and just say hey man i need help like because without somebody letting you know they need help you you're not able to help them I know we get on this platform and we do our thing, but we could not do this without people responding. We couldn't do this without people responding. So self-development is one of those things that never ends. We all take it on the chin. We all get knocked down or what we feel like knocked the fuck out, whatever you want to call it. We all go through that. But the more we continue to develop ourselves and figure out how to strengthen our mind, whether that's spiritually for you, meditation, Whatever it takes, we have to figure out a way to continue to develop ourselves because that was the thing in the Army. During the time in the military, you always had to be doing some type of hip pocket training to develop your skills. You should know the job two positions up and two positions below, beneath you. There was never any time to just sit around, even though we did it a lot. But if you ask them, there was never any time to just sit around and do nothing. There was always something to do. And in life, like I talked about Whiskey Charlie, and I'm always, I don't give him a hard time, but I, I admire what he does. If you look at his Facebook page, all the crazy hours he says he works, he goes home and he's still working on a house. I was just watching, looking at something, I don't know, a week ago, building garden boxes. And he's always building something. Like he's always looking to develop something else and not just stop and get comfortable. So that's the real question. What are you doing to continue to develop yourself? Like, what are you doing? No, it's, hey, look, I, my, with me, I'm always looking at opportunities to, uh, I, I guess, better myself at better, better at home. But it's not just for me, but it's also to, uh, you know, develop my uh, children on uh, keeping busy. And uh, to learn to, uh, you got to do your things yourself. Yeah, you, know, you gonna have to like the things I've I've learned. I've all, I've had my dad been around, and he's uh, 
talk me through some things and how to do things and everything else. But I'm also, he also tells me, Hey, you're going to do it yourself first. That's one of my biggest things. My dad always told me, you're going to do it yourself first. He ain't going to come and show me. He's going to tell me, Hey, you need to go out there and learn how to do it first. If you need help afterwards, I'll come over and help you. I, uh, I called him the other day because I, I started building onto my shed. Well, for the first time when I building on my shed, I, I thought I was, I thought it was going to be leaking a whole bunch. Well, got back over yesterday after that pouring down rain that we had, uh, it came out to be, uh, actually, uh, dry inside. So I did well myself and it's just coming from the factor of, uh, you know, it just came from the factor of, uh, just trying it and just, just believing in myself. So, and that's the biggest thing is at the end of the day, you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe that you can do anything you want to do. And that had the proper tools, you know, when, when, when we got uh, deployed or anything like that, when we got, if you got the proper tools, man, you can do anything you want to, as long as you believe in yourself. That's it there. I mean, I was watching something the other day <clears throat> on this dude. That's what you would, what you would call a breatharian. A breatharian. That's and, pretty hard to say right there, big sergeant. Yeah, B E R A T <laughs> like breath, B E R A T H, Therian, A R I A N. And what a breatharian is, is someone who truly believes on using the energy of the sun and meditation and the energy of the earth and positive vibes and things around him to pretty much sustain a life. This dude has been on his journey for 20 years. And for 20 years, he has not eaten food. Like, no no food. What the fuck? Yeah, he does. He was doing liquid. So let's say he was hey, wait, hold, on, hold on a second. Is, the net, is his name Gutierrez? Gutierrez. No, 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 no. <laughs> but what's so crazy... Yeah, it does sound pretty gay, but the dude was pretty ripped. Like at like 60, <laughs> 70 years old, full eight, pounds, yeah, full of life, full of energy. Um, I, I I I got a six pack, but it's inside my cooler right now, bro. I'm just gonna yeah. that out there. But for the last two years, the last two years, this dude has went without eating and barely drinking any water. And he's teaching people this practice to do this. And he started this journey. When he started developing himself, because he talked about how when he was a kid, they always had food in the house. And his parents' motto was always have enough food for your family and your friends if necessary. And he said he did all those things. When he got his family, he did that, had the extra freezers and was just eating like crazy. And you know what happened to him? Like everybody else, he gained weight. He started having these arthritis and high blood pressures and all these things of this nature. And he was introduced into this idea of eating once a day, not eating three times a day, five times a day, and how the body, you know, uh, how to how to how the body needs, you know, fasting and things like that. And that's what led him into becoming a breatharian 20 years later. So I'm not saying this is something that you develop overnight. It's just like if you chose to go vegetarian or if you choose to go pescatarian or vegan or egatarian that was a new one i heard oh, if you shit. choose to go one of those tarians it's not going to be something that you develop overnight because you came into this world watching and learning from the people closest to you and if they wasn't vegetarian or vegan you didn't develop the skill set to think that you can live without meat you feel like you need meat for protein that's not true because the things that we eat from meat they get their protein from plants. But over a period of time, whether it's five years, 10 years, 15 years, you can develop your mindset to be whatever you want it to be. And that's what we, I think we forget. We don't understand the power that we really possess because some of the times the individuals around us don't realize the power they possess either. And we think it's crazy when we hear about somebody doing it. Think about the guy, the Iceman, William Hoff who can get his body in and, and below freezing water and swim and be fine and be in ice baths like it's nothing. Again, that's all self-development. That was developed out of his wife getting sick. 
That's all self-development. Education don't education starts when school ends. Yeah. Hey, big Sarge. Hey, look, it comes down to the end of the day. It's like I always tell everybody, hey, everybody's different. Everybody's just like everybody's preaching, uh, they they preach on this uh the shot for COVID and shit like along that line, you know, and when it, like you were talking about earlier about weightlifting and shit like that, right? Everybody's body reacts to everything differently, right? In your mind, everybody reacts to everything differently. Everybody has their own opinion, what is right and what is wrong. And that's where, I, like I've said from the get-go, and people call me all kinds of things when I say this, but, you know, hey, everybody has their own mindset, what is right and what is wrong. It's it, At the end of the day, hey, you got to do what satisfies you, right? The thing is, the government uh, tries to control things, but you, you're never going to satisfy everybody. You're not. And that, that's the reason why the government does what the fuck it does. Uh, cause there's no common ground. There's no common ground of what is right and what is wrong. Uh, and truthfully, we all feel like we know what is right and we all feel like we know what is wrong, but, but the end of the day, it's the, they're, 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 they're going to play us against each other no matter what. And as long as you know what you have in your heart and in your mind, what's right for you and, and everything else. That's why whenever people are like, Oh, Justin, like this, that, and the other, like, Hey, well, you know, you see what's going on. No, I don't see what's going on because you know what? At the end of the day, I'm focusing on me and my family before I'm focused on anything else. And that's why, why I'm reaching the goals that I want to reach, the, the goals that people are like, oh, man, I wish I could do that. You can do it. You can do it because I, the reason why I can do it is because I'm not focused on everybody else. I'm not focused on everybody else's fucking bullshit that, they, that they're focusing on. My focus is my wife, my kids, everything else. I can give two shits what everybody else is doing. I'm. Uh, some people may think that selfless, but at the same time, I I love my family. I love my girls. Everything else. As long as you don't fuck with them, look, y'all do what the fuck y'all want to. I'm gonna pay my bills. I'm gonna come home and take care of my family. I'm gonna do my thing that I regularly do on a daily basis. Ain't shit gonna stop me. Facts. That's how you develop yourself, though. Unfortunately. <clears throat> Unfortunately, a lot of us don't take the time by ourselves to develop yourself. It's called self-development for a reason. I had to spend a lot of days by myself before I got to this position I'm in. I've talked about me being a deadbeat dad. I've talked about me being a deadbeat husband or being a fucking liar, a cheater, a adulteress. I've talked about all those things from dropping out of high school to quitting the military. If you ask me, I was just downright doing some losing shit in my book. But it was me taking time with Ethan, taking time with Big Sarge and asking myself, what do I really want out of this thing called life? If I truly believe in God, if I truly believe in the higher power, then how dare I sell myself short? Like people don't even know that I've been in the military or been overseas and fought in combat just because they say I don't come off like that. Whatever that's supposed to mean. I don't know the inv individuals they encounter, but like Whiskey Charlie said, we all handle things differently. And for me, I know I did a lot of praying when I was overseas. I know I had a praying wife and a praying mom who kept me covered. That's just what I believe. And I tell people when I left Iraq, I left Iraq. Yeah, I dealt with some of that. I had the nightmares, the, the fighting my wife in my sleep and the, the fits of rage and the alcoholic days. I was drinking like a fucking fish. Like, it's nothing but the grace of God that I'm sitting here right now and didn't kill anybody or kill myself. I remember days driving in Austin, Texas down I-35, so drunk that I was throwing up in my lap as I was driving. I remember those days getting home and not knowing how the fuck I got here. I remember all those days, but it was up to me to say no more of these days. Like my wife, my kids, they don't deserve this. For the people that don't believe in me, that want to walk out on me, fine. That's their choice. But I'm going to walk into me, and I'm going to develop me, and I'm going to believe in me. I'm going to believe in what God got me here to do. And, and I'm just grateful that I did that. So I feel you on that, Whiskey Charlie. Like, as a man, when you take on a woman to be your wife, that's your number one responsibility, according to the God that I believe in. So it's like my wife and my family, that's me more uno for me. In order to get in what they need, I got to give them what I need. It's, it's so important that we do that. Yeah, I, th I think where it comes in also into play is, uh, is 
too much selfishness uh, on that factor, right? You've got to also take it to yourself and say, hey, man, like, I've, I've got to not only do this for me, but I also got to do it for the individuals that uh, love me and that care for me at the same time, right? Uh, you're going to sit there and think that nobody cares for you, nobody loves you. There's a lot more people out there that care and love for you than you ever would never imagine. And, uh, you know, not a lot of them speak about it, right? Because one of the things is to me is I, I've seen the other day, so like, you know, not a whole lot of people speak. Not a whole lot of people speak, but they, they do love you. But at the same time, it's just not a lot of people. Again, it goes back to being different about who different people are different uh, things, how they how they love or how they think about things and everything else. Right. You, you, you've got to think that there's, there's people out there that don't show their love as as you do. Right. And, and, and you've got to go, you know what? They love me. I know they do. But it ain't, they ain't like they're going to call you every day. They're not going to text mm-hmm. you every day and stuff like that. Right. Mentally, you got to tell yourself, hey. You know, hey, they they call me like like once a month. What? What? Yeah, you see that, huh? Yes. Okay. But you know, you gotta sit there and tell yourself, like, hey, man, it's it's one of those things that it's it's a distance love, right? Not everybody's gonna do everything exactly like you do, right? You may like myself. I call. I, I try to get in touch with my my grandmother uh, on my dad's side. Try to get in touch with her like once a month or so, like that, and uh, try to. Uh, catch in, catch in, catch up with her, and everything else. And then I tried to uh, reach out to my family members at least once, if not twice a month, and just check in on them. Right? Not everybody thinks like I do, but at the same time, they they may not reach out to me. But it's it's like one of those things that uh, you've got to tell yourself, like, hey, at the end of the day, I, I've heard it before. It's like, hey, well, uh, phone works both ways. Yes, it does. But at the same time, is wh- why why go to that same level as somebody else that doesn't reach out? Right. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to do my part. So mentally I, I'm saying, Hey, to myself, like, Hey, mentally I'm telling myself like, Hey, I did everything I could, or I did everything I, I can, you know what? And it makes me feel that much better knowing that I did what, what I, I thought was good because I did this. Right. Yep. So I agree. My, my personal opinion is I don't care how long it's been, how often we talk or we don't talk. If you're the individual who has the thought about calling someone and you want to talk to them, then make the fucking call. You have no, you have no control of whether they answer or not, how they answer, what their energy is going to be. But if you want to talk to them and that's something to desire, you have to make the call. Because if you don't and something happens to them, then it's going to bother you. And you like, you never knew. So it's like, if their energy is going to be negative, that's fine. You don't have to stay on the phone with them long, but at least you know you did your part in making the call. That's another part of growing up. That's another part of developing self, being a bigger man, being a bigger woman, letting bygones be bygones, moving forward. You know what I'm saying? And understanding that in life, most people may not admit it, but in life, we all felt like we got a bad hand dealt at a probably a point in time in our life, or this is a shitty situation, or something that just rubbed us the wrong way that seemed like an obstacle was, was probably an opportunity. Yeah, and the thing, that. hey, Big Sarge, when, when it comes to that obstacle, right, it's a big problem, right? Uh, and, and there's several different approaches how you can approach that problem. Now, from from approaching that problem, Maybe it's something small that can cure or not cure uh, how, how to correct that problem, right? You're thinking about the whole thing, right? And think about the whole book. Let's just say that, right? You think about the whole book of like what it's all going to take to get that, right? But how about taking it? How about taking it back at a chapter at a time, right? And taking it like at one piece at a time, right? You're not just going to go in there and try to take on the whole book and read it all in one day. You're going to read it a chapter at a time, and that's what you got to think in your in your mind on a day-to-day based on what obstacle you have is pick a chapter pick a chapter of what you're going to do and each chapter you're going to better and better and better and then guess what by the end of the month end of the year whatever else you're going to reach that goal that you're wanting to reach but you've got to take it a chapter at a time you cannot take it a whole book at a time no you can't baby steps small steps equals great distances Yes, take it one. And here's the thing about taking it one chapter at a time. When you pace yourself, you learn more about yourself. And going back to the thing that you started with, self-development. When you take it 
you know, one step at a time, you develop you develop strengths in areas that you didn't know that you needed to. You 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 strengthen some of those weaknesses. And that's what's exactly. important. It's like Denzel Washington say, don't confuse work with progress. Sometimes we work and work and work and, <clears throat> and we haven't progressed anywhere. You know, whether that be in jobs, whether that be in relationships, you know, in school, you might have went and you got the paper and you got the degree, but you still have the same attitude. You didn't learn anything. You're not progressing in life. It's totally different. When you listen to Whiskey Charlie talk about not knowing he was going to be with Home Depot for as long, but he's progress. He's not still just walking the floor. No offense to anybody that is. They may like that. But he's at a point to where he's able to put his family in a better position, his wife in a better position. And he's doing what he loves because he's not just working, but he's progressing by developing himself. And that's what happens. True self-development reflects progress. If you look at yourself in your life and you feel like, okay, I'm not progressing in life, ask yourself a simple question. What areas of my life do I need to develop in? This grunt speak, speak grunt. Maybe we need to go get some help at the VA, even though it's not the best place, but it might be a place to start. Maybe you need to call a battle buddy and talk about what you're really going through. Maybe you need to share that intimate moment with your wife too. Maybe it's somebody you need to talk to. Maybe you need to start working out again. Maybe you need to start walking again. Maybe you need to take a step back from the drinking and the smoking. Maybe you need to take a step back from eating all the red meats. I don't know what that thing is for you that you need to begin with to develop you, but the key is to start developing you again. If you alive, there's something great left for you to do, and it's definitely up to you to do it. Yeah, hey, definitely. Hey, no, big point there, Big Sarge. Hey, look, it's all about prioritizing what chapter you're going to start on, right? What's going to realistically get you to the goal that you want to at a faster and more strategic, uh, faster routes, right? Because we're not always going to choose, hey, start with chapter one. You may not start with chapter one, but you're also going to prioritize and be like, hey, this is what's going to help me to the route that I need to the best way, right? Because you're not just going to like, hey, I want to make millions, Hey, I'm I'm just I'm just gonna go out here and you know work work on nine to five and work uh you know just the regular old you know minimum wage at you know seven dollars and twenty five cents. You ain't gonna do that, right? You you you're going to be like, hey, look, this is what I need to do, right? You may skip a few chapters, but you're also gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna prioritize this right here, and you're gonna focus more on that. And that's what you need to do is focus more on what's gonna get you to where you want to, and prioritize that. And be consistent. Be consistent with that goal, right? If you're not consistent with the goal, you're not going to get there. If you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to lose 50 pounds this year. But uh, you know what? One cheeseburger is not going to uh, hurt me this year, uh, this week. You know, I can have one cheeseburger. You know, you be realistic and be, uh, be consistent. Like, hey, you know what? I'm losing this weight. Indeed. Absolutely. Again. That's self-development, man. It's, it's difficult to say I'm not going to eat. Like, the first time I decided not to eat meat, well, not the first time, the last time where I really took it serious, back in 2017, I only had a simple mission. I'm not going to eat meat for one week. That was it. I have been eating meat most of my life, so it would have been crazy for me to say I'm not going to eat meat never again. That one week turned into four months, but it was that one week of me developing the strength and figuring out different things to eat and fighting those cravings that allow me to make it to four months. You have to take that thing one step at a time. Like I have a friend of mine who I was talking to and I, we don't talk all the time, but I was talking to the other day and he was like, yeah, man, I just joined AA. I've been in it for two weeks now. He's like, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying it. I'm looking forward to my 30 days sober. And I, I damn near cried. I was just happy for him. Like, because this was a buddy of mine who had, when he woke up in the morning, beer was breakfast. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it was like, yeah. he made a choice to do something different and he celebrated. And that's another thing we have to do. You have to celebrate the small victories that you accomplish too. Don't beat yourself up because it's only been a week or two. Like celebrate that thing. It's longer than you probably went before. So that's important, man. And surround yourself with people who's also developing themselves as you begin to develop yourself, because if you hang around people who are doing the same thing, you're going to wind up in the same position. 
Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the goals that I've uh, set myself pretty much on is that uh, instead of uh, start drink like I drink a lot, and 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 whatever whatever you want to call it. Uh, but one of the things that I've set myself as is stop drinking as soon as it turns twelve. Right? I always thought it was okay. You know, it's twelve o'clock. It's okay to drink, right? And I start drinking so heavy, and then I'm like, hey, you know. Three or four o'clock comes around and I'm knocked out, or you know I'm way beyond what I need to. So I started pushing myself into, hey, you know what? Let's not start drinking until five o'clock, right? It's small goals, small baby steps that I'm going to make my myself to the point to where it's like, hey, and it's going to start minimizing how much I drink. It's going to start minimizing the drinks that I have by limiting the time that I have. Absolutely. Absolutely, and you know. I want. I don't want to say that, but I'm gonna say it. It's not a problem until you decide it's a problem for you. And I say that to say this: it was a point in time where my wife, um, a, a girlfriend that I had, had both made comments that I was an alcoholic, or maybe I drunk too much. I personally didn't think I had a problem at all. I didn't want to accept the fact that I couldn't handle my liquor. I was like most alcoholics: once you drink one or two, and it go down good. The valve's wide open and you feel like you could just keep on going. And that's what I would do. I would just keep on going. But since I hadn't killed anybody, I had never been pulled over for a DUI, I had never lost a job or really lost anything from my drinking, I didn't feel like it was a problem until 2017 when I realized, okay, this might be a problem. And I wasn't drinking on a regular basis all the time. What the problem was, when I started drinking, I didn't know my limit. And I would drink. It didn't matter what time of the day. Seven in the morning, eight in the morning. If I felt like I wanted to have a drink, I would have a drink. But then I start sneaking my drinks because people would think, you know, oh, you're an alcoholic. You're drinking too much. No, I'm not. I'm just drinking as much as I want to. So it's not a problem until you feel like it's a problem for you. But at the same time, when the people closest to you who you know really love you and got your back saying that this is a problem, it might be a problem that we want to look at. That's how I look at it. So I think oh, it's yeah. great that you take those 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 small tools and find a way to win. Hey, I can still drink and do what I do, but I don't have to get up and drink at this time. Maybe I'll wait to this time, and it will slow down the time that you drink. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One, no, and it's, two, three. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's oh, me and my daughter sit here playing uh, with a little uh, mini mouse uh, kickball. We're here hey, throwing I them. Feel you. You know, trying to get my cardio in before I go to sleep tonight, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm watching you. I'm watching you throw the ball, girl. Hey, I'm, I'm, uh, Thomas says, I'm sitting here with a friend of mine showing him the show, and we're talking about the same things y'all are talking about, like deja vu. God works in mysterious ways, brother. <laughs> Oh, definitely, definitely. Hey, man, it's uh, it's uh, it's crazy. Is that most of my points either pop up either from my workplace or my life, you know? And that's the reason why I talk on it. And you know, that's why I want to encourage our uh, our followers and our people that uh, you know uh, follow us and chime in all the time. But it's, uh, if you got a topic that you want to touch on, you guys, hey, look, be more and. Uh, we're, we're excited about the fact, you know, if y'all come in and give us a topic to talk about, because we can definitely touch in on it, and maybe y'all can even uh, teach and coach and train us on those pieces. Indeed. and in, Indeed, that is true, man. When you – here's what I learned in during the time of developing myself. When you start to put yourself in a position to get better out of your life or do better in your life, God, Buddha, Allah, whatever you believe in, the universe – it attracts that same energy to you because it sees you making a difference. You attract the type of energy you want to be around, you want to become. And I guess that's why they say, if it's something that you want to do in life, you want to be successful at, watch somebody who's already successful at it. That's one of the things that I'm learning. Based on what I would like to consider some traumatic things that happened in my childhood, I developed serious trust issues. I could be friends with a ton of people and not really trust too many people or let them close enough to trust, right? So, hey, upside down, Rob, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, you know, what that does is it closes you off from other people to let anybody in. 
But when you start to check yourself and you start to develop yourself, it shows you that, okay, maybe everybody else wasn't tripping. I was just tripping a little bit. And it's okay to open myself up to love, to grow, to be different. And once you do that, I swear, man, the, the energy that you attract, it gives it right back to you the same way that you give it out. It's no joke when they say you can get more done with love than you can with anger. That's true. I mean, we look at the anger and the things that's going on in our world, man. We already know things can be changed by the way we do things or the way we treat people. But we got to start treating ourselves good first in order to treat anybody else. The Bible says, love your neighbor as you love thyself. I truly believe some of us are loving our neighbors the way we love ourselves. We talk about ourselves. We beat ourselves up. We do little ourselves. So we do the same thing to our neighbors, and we expect goodness to come out of that. Don't work like that, man. We have to start developing from within in order for it to be seen on the outside. The internal is always greater than the external. Yeah, it definitely is. Definitely internal. Is, it's all about what you're going to do, too. Uh, and we're talking about you know, self-development here, right? So, you know, it's all about what you're going to do what you're going to do, not what anybody else is going to do. And that's the biggest thing is uh, I touched on a little bit earlier is like, Hey man, it's, it's, it doesn't matter what anybody else says or how everybody else does things though, how you do things and how you're going to approach situations. I don't let, you know, media or anything else affect what I do or my opinion on things. I, I, I it's my opinion. That's what it is. It's my opinion. I have that right. And, that, and uh, that's the great thing about living in America is have my my freedom, my opinion, and my right. So I'm going to believe what I want to. I may not agree with Big Sarge. I may not agree with anybody else on this page. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'm going to do what's best for my family. And brother, that's, that's all you can do because that is the true definition of self development. You got to do what's best for you. And the family that you created, if you've created a family, if you plan on creating a family, as a man, we have to do what's best for us in the eyes of your higher power so you can give it to the family that you choose to create. Because if you don't do that, then we're just perpetuating the same bad habits or generational curse or generational traumas and things of that nature. We don't challenge ourselves. Although we have a lot of friends that walk with us, this thing called life, we walk alone. At the end of the day, we really do walk alone because nobody can read your mind or know exactly what's going on inside your mind and your thoughts. But if you share them with other people, then that road don't seem so lonely because they want to help you. So that's that's a powerful thing right there, brother. Oh, yeah. I love me. That's the thing of the day. I love me. Hey, Absolutely. <laughs> I did a video on that a couple weeks back. I love me. I love all of me on one of my Mr. Peen page that my wife put up. So it's it's very important, man, to love yourself more. Love, love you more than you give yourself credit for. Because if you're still here, it's something that you're supposed to do. For a reason. Yep. Yep, it's coming up on that time, 9 o'clock, where we shut it down and unwind, and I'm going to have to let y'all go because I got to go check on my wife. Yeah. Some of this good uh, vegetable stew, the broth in her system, so she can be feeling nice and strong. And uh, yeah, and we can continue on, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely, Big Sarge. Hey, man, hey. Appreciate the guys that chimed in today and appreciate to everybody that, uh, you know, that liked and shared our, uh, our video here. If you haven't, definitely do so because uh, we want to reach out to as many as our fellow uh, battles out there that does uh, need this, comp uh, need this uh, insight. And uh, if you like, again, if you have something that you want to put out there, if you want to you have a topic that you want to uh, touch in on. Just let us know. Hey, man, we'll, we'll touch in on that topic. We'll, we'll even bring you in if you'd like. Uh, we'd love uh, bringing uh, guests in on our shows, so uh, definitely give us a shout. Let us know once we get off here, and uh, we'll get you in. Yep. I know I need to go get me some rest, too. I can see the grocery bags up under my eyes. I'm starting to feel a little bit weak, probably been doing too much, but hey, that's how you do when you want to get the best out of you. Again, like Whiskey Charlie said, we definitely appreciate y'all for tuning in, for commenting, liking, sharing talking about it, you know, all of those things. And again, 
if you want to be a part of the show, just let us know. If you have a topic, something um something that you want to hear us talk about, then let us know, man. We're open to this. This is by grunts for grunts. Everybody welcome, but everybody cannot and will not be a member. Just like everybody didn't choose to be infantry, everybody won't choose to be a part of this thing that you're seeing us do. But the ones who do, we appreciate you. And the ones who don't, we appreciate you too. Because I just said it. You get more done with love than you do with fear. I don't need you to fear me. I just need you to hear me. Hey, Eric Page, brother, it's good to see you, man. Love you. How you doing? Oh, check him out, Page. Right? Fucking, uh, hey, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, if y'all haven't, uh, if you get down to some Texas country, look up Eric Page, man, I'm telling you. I've always been getting down. Page band. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Deer man. Deer man. (laughs) You know, somebody asked me about deer man. Um, I think... Ranger came when we was out eating. Um, when we were out eating at dinner, he asked me about Deer Man. Well, at lunch, he asked about Deer Man. Oh, boy. Yeah, so that was pretty interesting, man. It's always good to hear from you, brother. We definitely got to figure out a way to link up, man. Um, I'll come down to Victoria or something. We get Z and Torres involved and Sutton and whoever we can. But I would love to meet up with y'all again. Help me see each other before bad times. You know, good times. As me and Lieutenant Lounsbury was saying, the older you get, you seem like you're only getting together for funerals and weddings. Let's change that narrative, man. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I guess what I'll do is me and Whiskey Charlie have to figure out how to put something together. Man, we could do a speak grunt live. Like from somewhere with all the fucking people that show up. Yeah, definitely. Dope. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna let y'all go. Like I said before, I need to go check on my lovely wife and turn this stew off that's on the pot. And then I need to prepare myself to get up and go back to work tomorrow so I can make sure I got enough energy to do what I need to do. Uh, it's been Grunt Speak. My grunts for grunts. Everybody welcome, but everybody cannot. And will not be a member. Upside down team. <laughs> 11 B, 11 Charlie, 11 Alpha 2, 03 11. You know what you do. We salute you. Keep on fighting a good fight to develop the best version of yourself. We out. Peace. Peace out. Hi.